So I want to discuss few question and answer what is very essential for NCLEX licensing exam. By this question and answer, I want to print something in your brain and that helps for licensing exam. The first question here, a nurse is assessment a client abdomen. Identify the area where the nurse should place our hand to palpate the liver. So you have to click the area where the liver is there, right? Is it upper quadrant, lower quadrant, right side or left side? So you, you have to click in this green area. So the green, rectangle show the correct answer and if you place your hand liver is there so in this picture we can see the abdomen divided in six region right upper or right hypochondriac left hypochondria so liver is occupied right upper side or right upper hypochondriac region, but left side we get spleen. In between, we get stomach, also part of the liver, epigastric area. Then we can see left and right lung or lumbar region here in between intestine. It is right groin, left side and pelvic areas urinary bladder there, appendicitis in the right side. So the examiner asking about the liver, palpate the liver, right? So some chronic liver disease like imagine carcinoma liver, liver get bigger or we call hepatomegaly. But in cirrhosis, the liver is very small, not large. A normal liver may be palpate on deep inspiration in very thin people. Right? So, what is the explanation? The nurse can best palpate the liver by standing on the client's right side and placing her right hand on the client's abdomen to the right of the midline. Also, the nurse should point the finger of her right hand towards the client's head, just under the right rib margin. So this is the right coastal margin, left coastal margin. Next question. A nurse is monitor a client for adverse reaction during barbiturate therapy. What are the major disadvantages of barbiturate use. Number one, prolonged half-life, poor absorption, potential for drug dependency, and also potential for hepatotoxicity. So examine asking this question about the barbiturate. The correct answer here, patient chance to develop potential for drug dependency. So a barbiturate is a drug that act as a central nervous system depressant. Barbiturate are effective as anxiolytics, as hypnotics, 
or as a contact convulsant, but have the physical and psychological addiction potential as well as overdose potential among the other possible adverse effect. So what are the very important note every student must know about the barbiturate? Let me explain. Barbiturate, the drugs classify as a short, intermittent, and long acting sedative and or hypnotics. So barbiturate we use as a anxiolytics, as a hypnotics or anticonvulsant medication. At the low doses, they increase the inhibitory effect of GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter we call inhibitory effect. At the high doses, they act like generally anesthetics and can cause profound central nervous system depression and death in overdoses. Barbiturate are also anticonvulsant properties. So let me read rationale. The client can become dependent on barbiturate, especially with prolonged use, because the rapid distribution of some barbiturate or no correlation exists between the duration of action and half-life. Barbiturate are absorbed very well and do not cause hepatotoxicity. But because the barbiturate are metabolized in the liver, existing hepatic damage does require with tuition to use. Next question, trachycardia. So trachycardia can result from, so what are the cause of trachycardia? Number one, bigger stimulation. Number two, vomiting, anger, or suctioning means emotional disturb. Anxiety can cause trachycardia. Fear, pain, and anger. Number four, stress, pain, or vomiting. The correct answer is fear, pain, and anger. Rational, the fear, anger, stress, or pain can increase the heart rate. We call trachycardia. So when heartbeat is more than normal or upper limit, we call trachycardia. So the causes of trachycardia or supraventricular trachycardia, like fever, infection lead to the septicemia, septicemia lead to sepsis, hyperthyroidism can cause trachycardia. Caffeine, nicotine, phys physical or emotional stress, like fear, pain, anger, can cause trachycardia. What are the disease condition, like chronic heart failure or heart chamber enlargement, like left ventricular hypertrophy, COPD, lungs disease, or myocarditis can cause trachycardia. On the other hand, bradycardia. So decrease the heart rate, we call bradycardia. Bradycardia can stem from vomiting, suctioning, or certain medication can cause bradycardia. Here we see what are the drugs 
can cause bradycardia? And how we can remember? If we remember ideas, we explain or we can easy way to remember what are the drug risks can cause bradycardia. Bradycardia is a condition typically we define where in an individual has a resulting heart rate of under 60 beat per minute, right? Bradycardia typically does not cause any symptom until the rate drops below 50 beat per minute. When bradycardia can cause symptoms, it may cause fatigue, weakness, dizziness, sweating, right? So what are the drugs can cause bradycardia? I said, easier to remember, idea. I stand for, I so pro, Renol. So isoprotenol is system a synthetic derivatives of adrenaline. And adrenaline we used for the relief of bronchial spasm or pulmonary emphysema. D stand for dopamine, E stand for epinephrine, A stand for atropine. So atropine can cause bradycardia, epinephrine can cause bradycardia, dopamine can cause bradycardia, or isoproterenol can cause bradycardia. And rest of things can cause trachycardias. Next question. When Oscultating a client's chest, the nurse assessment a sound. We call a second heart sound or first heart sound. Examiner asking, what is the reason or result can cause second heart sound? Right? So we have a Two heart sound S1 and S2. So S2 is for those number one, opening of mitral and tricuspid valves. Number two, closing of mitral and tricuspid valves. Number three, opening of aortic or pulmonary valves. Number four, closing of aortic or pulmonary valves. The type answer is. S to close the closing of aortic and pulmonary valves, right? So in the, here, the picture, we see this is the pulmonary valves, tricuspid valves, mitral valves, and aortic valves. So first heart sound is one, is caused by closure of mitral and tricuspid valves at the beginning of ventricular contraction. Let me recap it. S1 heart sound is a low frequency sound. And it is occurring at the beginning of systole, right? At the beginning of systole, and S1 is best heard over the apex, right? And using a stethoscope, bell, or diaphragm. The first heart sound is caused by turbulence created when the mitral or tricuspid bulb closing, right? And second heart sound, Basically, when photos, right? Second heart sound photos 
closure of aortic and pulmonary valves. And S2 is the sound of aortic valve making when it shut down at the end of systole. So end of systole, right? Or, or end, the beginning of that story, right? And S2 is produced to prevent the blood from backflow out of the aorta into the ventricle, right? Like this picture, we said, hmm? the second heart sound S2 is caused by closure of aortic and pulmonary valves at the end of ventricular systole. So their rationale, the S2 result from the closing of the aortic and pulmonary. The first person S1 occur when the mitral and tricuspid valve get closed. Next question. When inspect a client's skin, a nurse find a circumscribed uh, uh, elevated area that it is filled with the serous fluid. What term should the nurse use to document these findings? So there are some skin injuries or lesion that is the field with the serous fluid. How we differentiate it? How you note it down? What is all macules, papules, vesicles, or pustules? Right? Which one? The correct answer is vesicles. Right? So a vesicle is a circumscribed skin elevated fluid with the serous fluid. Right? A flat, non palpable colored spot is called macules, a solid but elevated and circumscribed lesion is called papules, an elevated but pus containing or pus filled circumscribed lesion is called prostyl. So like this picture, rapid evolution, Macules, see, papules, vesicle, and pustules. So, an area of the skin discoloration. And the lesion first appear as a macules. Or the lesion first appear as a papules and distributed in a dermatological pattern, which is progress into the vesicles, if untreated, lead to the pustules, and finally, cast formation like this. So how you differentiate them? We say macules is a flat and circumscribed and discoloration, but it is flat. Papules elevated and it is solid area, but it is less than five millimeter. When the papules more than five millimeters, we call nodules. And also plug, when elevated flat, and more than five millimeter top, we called plug. 
what is vesicle elevated but containing fluid look like this picture and less than five millimeter vesicle but if vesicle containing fluid more than five millimeter we call ola and finally blister or prosteol so common term for vesicle or ola and vesicle if it is discard pass field you see this pass raised area we call pasteol so it is the distribution dermatological pattern and which is progress into vesicle pasteol or cast if untreated second picture showing papules it small solid and raising right but less than five millimeters what is the plug a flat it is you see in the picture flat but it is elevated or raised flat topped lesion with the diameter consider greater than five this is called plug more than five where's the basic call this elevated fluid content but they does not contain the fluid it is contain the fluid right and if less than five millimeters but if it is more than five we call bola so or blister a greater than five millimeter diameter we call bola or blister common term of vesicle or bola but still this a visible accumulation of pus sometimes it is white yellow or green in color erosion an area of the skin from which the epidermis alone right all tissue the lost next question a client is 75 he is admitted to the facility because the client is or the nurse should modify the assessment for or by so my patient 75 years old and i need to go for assessment because of aging what i do number one shortening the assessment number two speaking in a loud voice we do not need number three addressing the client by his first name it does not make any sense number four allowing extra time for the assessment wonderful choice right so correct answer you give extra time you have to be patient you have to be a good listener right and before assessment make sure your patient is comfortable with you the therapeutic way of communication. The rational said, when assessment an elderly client, the nurse should allow extra time to compensate for easing related physiological change, addressing the client respectfully rather than by first name, right? Also give the simple instruction simple not complicated also speak out in a loud voice is the demeaning or assume that the client has difficulties of hearing which may not be the cause next question two days after the undergoing of total abdominal hysterectomy so uterus is totally removed, we call hysterectomy. A client complain of left 
calf pain. So a patient came to the surgical unit after a major surgical operation like hysterectomy. Definitely most of the times they have to take the bed rest. So during this time, chance to develop deep vein thrombosis because of immobilization. So the client complained left calf pain and venogram revealed the deep vein thrombosis we call DVD. When assessing the client, the nurse is likely to detect what? Which of the signs indicate my patient has a deep vein thrombosis? Number one, pallor and colorless of the left foot. It decreased the left pedal pulses, loss of hair on the lower portion. Number four, left calf circumference larger than the right. So number three is never the answer, right? Because deep vein thrombosis develop because of immobilization. It's not a chronic disease. Loss of hair for lower portion, it should be lower standing disease, like gangrene, ulcer, peripheral vascular disease, right? So best response, left calf circumference larger than the right. So deep in thrombosis, it is a thrombosis in a vein lying the deep below the skin, especially in the legs. It is most common in the legs. It is particularly a hazard of long standing or long time immobilization. So what are the basic signs and symptoms if patient have it, right? So sometimes patient complain in this picture, heaviness or swelling in the legs, pain and tenderness, or skin discoloration or ulceration. Also, if you touch local temperature increase, a warm sensation. If untreated, patient develop shortness of breath, sudden sharp chest pain or coughing. So deep vein thrombosis occur when the blood clot when you see in this picture, deep in thrombosis. So this is the legs, normal blood flow, deep in thrombosis occur. This is the thrombosis and causes obstruction. And this is emboli. Thrombosis and emboli, what are the difference between two? So blood clot formation and clot is enlarged or attached to the local tissue. When the blood clot is dislodged or mobile, we call emboli. So in this picture, the affected feet circumference larger than the right, right? One is the bigger, larger. So as I told you, Deep vein thrombosis occur when the blood clot or thrombus formation or embolus formation. And blood clot forms in one or more of the deep veins. Usually it is more common in legs. And deep vein thrombosis can cause the leg pain or swelling, but also can occur with no symptom. So example here, etiolo, what are the underlying cause of deep vein thrombosis? Maybe trauma, maybe patient give the history of hormonal uh, disbalance or patient give the history of taking oral contraceptive pills 
road traffic accident, immobilization, operation, surgical operation, like cholestectomy or hysterectomy, malignancy, blood disorder or polycythemia, obesity, old age, orthopedic surgery, serious illness, immobilization or splenectomy means surgically remove the spleen. So what are the clinical picture? Sometimes patient complain leg swelling, leg pain that is increased with walking or standing, visible surface leg gains, and warm or redness affect this leg skin or leg fatigue. So you can get deep vein thrombosis if you have a certain medical condition. And that medical condition that affect how your blood clot, right? So now question come, how we examine the patient legs and how we prevent deep vein thrombosis, a simple technique. And this is called home enzyme. So home enzyme can help you to find out if patient has a, any deep vein thrombosis or not. So significant sign and symptoms basically including the pain and swelling in involving extremities or calf muscle tenderness. Also positive hope home enzyme right, indicate patient has a deep vein thrombosis. So here I said, Hoffman sign, the car pain in dorsiflexion of the foot. Next question, a student nurse working with a registered nurse, is assigning a child with a epiglottitis. It is a condition where the cartilage is covered with a epiglottis because of inflammation, soiling or brokening the flow of air into the lungs. We call it epiglottitis. The student nurse tell the child that she must look into his throat, which intervention by registered nurse is most appropriate. Number one, hand the student nurse a flashlight and tongue blood. Number two, give the student nurse a sterile tongue blood. Number three, tell the student nurse that registered nurse will visually examine the child's throat Number four, tell the student nurse that the anesthesiologist will visually examine the child thought. Epiglottitis is a life threatening condition. It's very important to deal with a specialized person. The correct answer is number four, tell the student nurse that anesthesiologist will visually examine the child throat, right? So a rational said, direct visualization of the epiglottis can trigger completely airway obstruction. So only an anesthesiologist or a physician skill in pediatrics intubate may perform this procedure. So this is the epiglottis. So when this epiglottis is inflamed, we call epiglottitis. It is soil and block the flow of air into the lungs and result is difficulty of swallowing. So in this picture, we can see normal anatomy of the larynx 
So this area, this is epiglottis. So when it is swell, this pathway gets narrow, no air passing, right? 